When we think of theme park rides, we think of this. This, or even this. So, when I was asked to try out a new theme park dining experience called Etrenalin, I wondered what could possibly be in store. Well, I wasn't expecting this. Turns out it's less a physical thrill ride and more an emotional and culinary experience. This is the strangest experience I've had for quite some time. Nestled in the shell of an oyster, you will find fresh seafood. The food is augmented by visuals, lighting and music. Meals with feels. I've kind of forgotten that I'm moving, but I've still got this sense of tranquility. The story behind Etrenalin follows an AI who just wants to become human while diners are leisurely transported through themed spaces. I've been in a secret room which was surprising and amazing and surreal. And now it's time to go to Japan. The so-called World of Umami, a Japanese-inspired restaurant. Don't know many Japanese restaurants with a massive gong. Earlier in the day, I met co-founder Thomas Mack for a behind-the-scenes tour of the ride. Or is that experience? No one around here seems quite sure. It's our cha champagne bar, as we can have a drink in, in the evening, and then we go this way to board um, our floating chairs. These chairs are the culmination of four years of development and contain over 2,000 parts. So welcome. Wow. Here are our floating chairs. <laughs> it, it's like they're breathing, they're being charged up. So is it rollers or is it a cushion of air? So the first idea was a cushion of air, but then it was too loud, so then it was prototype number one. Uh -huh. And now it's all electrically uh, driven. And you have uh, three different wheels, but also the wheels uh, we developed. The floating chair can move. Once you are seated, you can uh, always oh, you uh, can move change. it forward and backwards, up and down. Uh, you have different functions and here in the, the tray that opens. So you have your uh, bottle of water here and um, there is going to be like a, a box with four different flavors, sweet, sour, salty and uh, bitter. The chairs use infrared sensors so they don't bump into anything and run to a pre-programmed journey through the rooms. Here, with this sort of movable chair, you're in complete control of your guest's journey. Diners change formations throughout the two-hour experience, so each new course brings a new companion, which may or may not add to the enjoyment. The main event, though, is the food, which is typical of a high-end restaurant. I love going in the kitchens because this is where all the real work's getting done. And this is amazing. You don't normally get this number of screens in a restaurant kitchen, but in fact, it's telling people everything they need to know about the diner's food tolerances and even exactly where they're sitting whilst they're having the experience. That makes sure that the food gets to the right person at the right time in the right room. Unlike a traditional restaurant, all plates have to be served simultaneously to keep up with the story. And the constant countdowns hang over the kitchen as a reminder, the pressure's on. In the end, we are a restaurant, a fine dining restaurant. But I think if the food is not good or if it, it's not at the same level as the media and the technique, then we did do something wrong. So for us, the food is the most important thing. Do you come here often? It's my first time. At nearly 200 euros per person, Etrenlin is definitely priced as a high-end restaurant rather than a ride. 
Europa Park aims to sell the concept to other parks and cities around the world and it's hoping the experience will be attractive to those outside the amusement park industry. It's a bold ambition and for a company used to exporting roller coaster hardware, it's a very big move into uncharted territory.